Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habit a question was asked Assalamu alaikum brother may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and preserve you I mean and you as well I really like the way you balance things out I was just wondering the issue of the scholar Al-Qardawi some people have told me that I have to declare him an innovator or else I am one having read Al-Qardawi's books even though he made some mistakes in fiqh his aqidah seems like that of the Salaf as he warns against grave worship and even though due to a video it may seem that he is Ashari when you read his books you see that the reality is that he is not Ashari also even though he was refuted by some of the ulama they still had positive interactions with him Jazakallah khair uh, this is a, <coughs> a, a controversial question however as many of our ulama from Ahlul Sunnah in this time have made tabdi of, of Yusuf Qardawi. And it is very clear he's held in high esteem around the world by many Muslims in general. And he uh, also is held in high esteem and considered a... Uh, a spiritual leader of Akhwana Muslimin, although he himself denies that and I think he divorces his role, but his positions are very much in accordance and his politics are very much in accordance. And without going into many details, because it's really not my concern so much, there is no reason for you really to go even from the benefit you might find in his books that you need to benefit from his books. And because many, many ulama of Ahl sunnah uh, and from some of the major ones that have warned definitely against him and considered him a uh, mubtadiya, and one of his big uh, criticizers is Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al wadi Allah yarhamhu, and Kathir al-Kathir have uh, made tabdi' or at least pointed out many mistakes in aqidah, in i'tiqad, issues in creed, and and in his positions, for example, democracy. And that's very clear. I've read that myself. And uh, uh, in his fatawa, in his um, his rasail and majmu'a fatawa uh, of Qardawi, and many, many other issues. So there really isn't a hajjah. There's no need for you, even whatever benefit you might find in some of his books, because he is an alam, he has knowledge. But because someone just has knowledge, even if, but they have some serious bid'ah, some serious mukhalifat in some issues in aqidah and, and, and otherwise, and ijtihadat, then there's no haja, because there's so many ulama of Ahl sunnah that you can take from. As far as the issue of you being an innovator because you didn't declare him an innovator, this is another thing that some of our ulama are clarifying that this is a qaida, this is a khafa, this is a mistake. And this is what some of the scholars are uh, pushing and kind of forcing some of the people to take their position. And definitely the students in du'at are, are eating that up and following that path. But we have some of our ulama that are, are clarifying that this is this is incorrect. And let's look exactly what Imam uh, Abdul Masin al abad said when asked about this question. So people asked him, they said uh, about the issue of he who does not make tibdi of whom we make tibdi of is a mubtadiya. Okay. First of all, we have to know where this qaida basically stems from. In essence, it is a... a uh, a usage or a qiyas, it's a qiyas really, a reasoning uh, from a from a qa'idah that Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentions in his Mijmu'a fat Fatawa, and even the takfiris try to use this to make takfir, but it's around the issue of takfir. He said, you know, and uh, Shaykh Muhammad ibn al-Wahhab and others use this qa'idah, which is he who does not make uh, takfir of a, a of a kafir is a kafir, okay, and this qaida, as the ulama explain, is in reference to the one who is clearly, 
clearly outside of the fold of Islam. So, for example, the one who says now, well, Jews or Christians are not disbelievers. Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes takfir of them in the Quran. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam makes takfir of them all throughout the authentic sunnah. So then for someone to come then and say that no, they're, they're our brothers in faith or whatever, then they have made takdeeb of the Quran. They have, uh, in essence, uh, undermined the Quran and saying, you know, no, you know, the Quran says this, Allah says this, but I'm saying this. No. So from that point, they uh, they have fallen into kufra akbar, you know, because they're making takdeeb of the Quran. Allah says this, intahena, that's it. So there's no, there's no room. So this is for the one who is clearly a disbeliever. We see this, that the takfiris understand this, that whoever they make takfir of, and if you don't make takfir of them, then you're a disbeliever. So they use this, which is an issue uh, when you're making this hukum on some, a specific individual, hukum ala, uh, you know, there's takfir mutlaq, takfir ma'ai, and the general takfir, and the, and the specific takfir, that when you're applying it to a specific individual, that this is takfir ma'ayin, and this, you know, there are conditions for that, and there's mu'ani, there's prohibitors for, prohibitors for that. The point is, is they use that principle to use it against those who oppose them. And this is the clear path of the Khawarij. This is why you have so many takfiris, these modern day people like Daesh, and they're the du'at like Faisal and um, Abu Qatada, and so many others, especially in the West, all over the world who use this principle to make takfir of other Muslims because they don't agree with them, basically. If they say so-and-so leader, so-and-so is a disbeliever, or they say this individual, or if they make takfir of a scholar and you disagree with them, then you're a disbeliever. That's a, a misunderstanding of the principle of Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah. He's talking about the disbeliever, Asliya. Now, as far as your question, as far as the Mubtadiya, so the people have taken that Qaeda. Or from that Qaeda, and, and also, you know, they there is a, you know, a wudj maybe from the Salaf as well, of course, because we know that from the Usul of Ahl Sunnah is refuting Ahl Bid'ah, is, uh, you know, Hajar Ahl Bid'ah, and all the other Ahkam related to Muamalat uh, Ahl Bid'ah, or Kayba Ta'amal Ma Ahl Bid'ah, how do you interact with the people of innovation? So the Salaf left us a clear precedence. However, there's so many details that the people fail to understand and the some of the people fail to mention because it serves their particular pur purpose or their his their group so with that being the case as far as saying you know this is an issue of ijtihadat although there are some clear mukhalafat that the ulama have pointed out and some have even you know had to be restrained you know even as far as almost making takfir of uh, Al Qaradawi for some uh, issues where he has uh, said some things and, and has some positions that are very, very controversial and very dangerous, if uh, depending on how it's understood. And so, with that being the case, I would say do not take from him. I regard him as a Mubtadiya, okay? Uh, and. But as far as declaring someone else a mubtadiya because they listen to him, that is that's not correct. Because it really, in in essence, these ahkam, when you apply it to a specific individual, they are ahkam al ijtihadiyah, and of course they require evidence. And those ulama have presented ample evidence. If you have the Arabic language, you can go to some of the statements of many of the ulama, especially in Yemen, Imam Muqbil, uh, you know, uh, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab al Wasabi. Uh, many, many of the ulama there that have spoken against uh, extensively about Qardawi and, and the ulama here in Saudi as well. But uh, so, but as far as an individual, no, because when you apply that, you're forcing the people to take that ijtihadat. Now, if the proof is very clear, it's wadah, they presented you evidence and you know, you understand the evidence and there's been, you know, some time and some patience, you know, as far as uh, dealing with these issues, you know, it's a very dangerous game. The point being it's a play with, okay, because he listens to so-and-so, he's a muqtadiyah. You may say this is a mistake. You may say he's mistaken in this area. That doesn't mean you have no ta'amul mahim because that doesn't 
uh, destroy his usul or your usul in this case. So this is not this is not correct, and the scholars have uh, mentioned this much more in detail and with much more clarity. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.